Hello and good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Paul Tranny here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hello, Penny. Uh, awesome. Just read in comments, Penny's playing with artboards and Photoshop. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to be diving into Illustrator today, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, so we will, we will do this. Yeah, Colby, where do you, you Colby's in Florida, right? Anyways, hello everyone. Good to have you here. I'm going to dive into minimalist illustrations. So that is the plan. Uh, basically kind of drawing like animals and wildlife, just common items that, uh, can be kind of complex, but I know, uh, you guys will have some fun creating some cool things. I'll make it easy on us and you'll see it here in a second. Let me just switch over right now. And there we are. All right. Oh, Colby, you did move. Yeah, sorry, I'm not even able to see this. Good morning. Da -da -da -da. Oh, Fort Collins. Colby's in Fort Collins. That's awesome. Colby, I'm down in, um, yeah, I'm down in Denver, just so you know. So this is, come on by, and you could, and we could design stuff together. Whatever you want to do, that works. All right, so I do have a little bit different lighting. It's a little bright because I actually don't have the main lights on. Um, just trying out some new things. But let's kind of start right in here in, not only in Illustrator, but in stock.adobe.com. So that's where I'm going right now. Give it a second. There we go. We can do chipmunk. We could do just fun animals. I can do animals. Sometimes if you type in uh, animals of all types and change it, actually let's change this to free, right? I could sort through all the free sort of animals available and I'm gonna switch this to photos, right? So this is more along the lines of what I want, right? So you see all, this, all these fun animals that I can work with. This bird is gonna be great, so we'll download that. We're just grabbing resources right now, licensing a couple, um, and downloading it. This one right here, this one right here. Look at that, all those animals there. Cool, got it. Right, I also have some already in my library's panel too. Today is dog, dog day. What does that mean? Is it like National Dog Day? All right, let's take a look, because also I have them already in my library. So you can see that that's where I got um, really a lot of these, to be honest with you. So we have our hunting hummingbird. I can drop in this hummingbird, right? We can make a vector version of that. If you're lucky enough to cut something out like this, this would be pretty easy to just vectorize and then smooth out some of the more complex um, shapes in it. Uh, let's see. Ooh, a rhino will be fun to do. Just grabbing a couple animals, as you can see. Our elephant. There we go. Lion. Just dropping them in. This toucan. Keel build toucan is what that is. All right, cool. Got it. Uh, yeah, it looks like Colby has gotten an interview for a design role at Crocs in Broomfield. Um, oh, awesome. Man, I hope you get it. Hope you crush it, man. Oh, dolphin. This would be really fun to do, too. So we could drop in these images. When you're dropping in images into Illustrator, what you can do is you, if you right-click, you're, you can place linked or you can place a copy. If I do place a copy, right, it's no longer going to be linked back to the library. So see how this is actually embedded and uh, this one is not, okay? And you can tell they're different if we look up at the top. It says like unembed, right? So if I select this one, this one says embed. So uh, from here, I might be a step ahead. But anyways, right in here, I have this, I can click embed, flatten all those layers into a single image, right? And then we can do some fun things. For this, I wanted to do this really fast. Since I have this in here, 
I can do a crop image. So select crop image. See what it did? When you select crop, crop image in Illustrator, it is able to recognize what the image is and crop to just where that image is, which is awesome. So I think that is cool. All right, I'm drinking my coffee. My lighting doesn't look that great, does it? How is this lighting? I've been struggling with it. Okay, let's go on to this one. So from there, once we have this, we can cut out the background. Even for uh, this rhino, we can go to image trace. We can click. It says, hey, this is going to be really large. You should try a lower resolution, you know, using object rasterize. Okay. That's usually what they want you to do just because this process might take forever. But it actually wasn't bad. But this is the problem that we get, right? A lot of times when we do sort of an image trace. And we want to simplify this, but, um, you know, it, it didn't simplify it enough, right? So, you know, we can see the tracing result. We can see the tracing result with outlines. So you can see all these vector paths in there, which is so much, right? You get the idea outlines with the source image. So you kind of have an idea of different uh, results. But what I like to go do is go to this image trace panel. I think this is so hidden. <clears throat> uh, you know, and I didn't know about this for years, but you can open up this image trace panel, which I love. Right. So from here, I can say, hey, you know, just give me three colors for this. Right. It will go through, analyze it. But basically, you can set presets and you have a ton more control. Ah, coffee is good. All right. Yeah, I got some disco lighting. I try to put a splash of light on my face because I have this, this little thing that kind of rotates around. So this gives me three colors, right? And what's cool about this is if you didn't know about this panel, this little, this little option right here, you wouldn't know that you have this ability to narrow it down because you'll just think that you have these options. But you open up this image trace panel, you twirl this down. Oh, wow. You know, give me two colors, for instance. The path complexity, corners, noise, you get the idea. This has a ton of texture to it, by the way. Thank you. All right, Mehdi never knew this existed. I'm glad you're here with me then. You know, this is good. Um, just, I mean, so many cool things. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do, um, I, I actually ultimately am just gonna select a simple option, but even right here, the method. Do I want to abut shapes? So it creates cutout paths or having over, overlapped shapes, which is great. Oh, Bobby Orlando didn't know this is, existed either. I didn't know up till like maybe two years ago. I've been using Illustrator for, for a minute now. Um, yeah, so anyways, probably what I do with this, if I wanted to create sort of minimalist version, I would actually go down and try either silhouettes or black and white logo. And we could watch how all this changes when we select either one of those. We'll go to silhouettes, right? So paths are halfway up, corners kind of halfway up, and noise. So reduce a lot of that noise. Let's see what happens even if we take it to 100%. But either way, this is sort of more of the solid shape that I'd want if I'm doing a... Um, sort of minimalist drawing. Yeah, so Penny used to avoid this because it would be hit or miss. I hear ya. High threshold, let's crank this up even more. There we go. So we just crank that th threshold all the way up and now we have sort of that outline uh, that I'd wanna go for to simplify this. So that looks good, right? You'd be like, okay, that's great. Hey, I can't change the color or anything because you do have to expand it up at the top. Let's click expand. Bingo, there we are. Let's actually cut this out and put it on its own layer nice and big.
Boom, boom. Scale it up. And it's so complex, so many points. We'll simplify it. Take it down to 177. Maybe even make it even less if I want to. And as long as we keep that structure, we could do a Command H to hide. And then if you press down the space bar, you kind of get a better feel for it. Because sometimes it's hard to tell, um, you know, You know, with all these points, it might be kind of hard to tell what your shape looks like. So Command H, you can see it there, and so on and so forth. But yeah, I think that kind of looks pretty good. We need to bring back the eyes and all that stuff, so let's do that now. Hello, Bliss, in the house. How are you doing? Right, this is the rhino that we're dealing with. Bring out that rhino. Not quite the same size. But that's okay. Here's our rhino. That's just sort of the easiest way to simplify something is to do your create outlines. From here, I can start to add more detail on top. Say, for instance, add that eye. I want to start drawing now, so let's grab my Wacom pen. I could also use my uh, pencil here. I could use my iPad. And let's just give like the hint, hint of an eye. All right, there's this little eye. And let's throw a circle in there too. Change that to black. So something kind of like that. Yeah, not bad. You guys get the idea. You get the idea. Let's put a little highlight in there. Why not? Let's see if that helps the eye. I don't know. Little glint. Not bad. I'd smooth this out a lot more. Things like that. So, all right. Cheers, bliss. All right, this is looking like super rough. So let's let's kind of take a take a look. We're gonna take this to the next step. So you guys get it. You know, I can add more to it. I probably want to add some lines in here. So flip these two. N for pencil. Take a look. Come in here and just like add some lines cutting in like that. Uh, where else? Where else? around the nose, maybe some sort of wrinkles coming up like that, starting to just draw these contours. Oh, let's undo that one. Should actually go this way, you know, and we could add more to the inside of the ear if we want to. See, so yeah, we also have this big arch for the chin like that and maybe additional lines. Now that I've made all those lines, let's angle them like that. There we go. So making sure they cut on in like that. So they start thick and then they get thin, right? So just changing the width profile. This one's going the wrong way. Does it mean you have to redraw it or anything? No, go to object, path, reverse path direction, bingo. And now it kind of cuts in from the top down into the bottom, okay? So that's all I'm doing. Just kind of made a 
pretty simple sort of, uh, yeah, just a simple illustration of a rhino based on that photo. It's probably the fastest way to do things. Uh, let's curve out this a little bit more, right? Right over here. Hey, buddy, move, move over, mister. Excuse me. Maybe we'll flip it, actually. There we go. We have this horn. We need to square this away, right? Um, maybe I actually want to like redraw the horn. Like maybe I do. Should I try that? Yeah, maybe not. I think it's okay. You'll just run into these situations where you need to smooth out parts. So right over here, Command H. You know, we have we have this spot. Oh, so sorry. You know, remove that anchor point. It's going to get all sorts of screwed up. I probably want to jump in and just do my anchor point, add my anchor point tool, click on it, and we'll just smooth that out like so. So that's all we need to do is like smooth out that one part. Okay. But you can go along any one of these spots right here. If I want to change, um, you know, this and smooth that out, I can. Or I can actually grab the whole line itself. I probably want to remove that. But as you roll over a line, you get the path adjustment tool. So you can actually grab it right there and that might make it easier to kind of bend accordingly. Cool, cool. Just kind of checking this out. I say we're done. We're done with that piece. Let's do some more, right? This is like one. He's looking kind of sad. Why is it? I think it's the shape of this eye right here. There we go. Move that down. See, that makes it look a little bit better. And let's uh, let's make something else now. Is it a rye no? Or is it a rye yes? Do you like it or not? All right, let's do a fun bird. Birds are so much fun to create. And this time I'm going to draw this based on um, just like basic shapes. Okay, so we're not going to do the outlines. That's usually where people start. Um... Oh, Noor has jokes. So here I have uh, this hummingbird. What's the hummingbird consist of? Oh, a body like so, right? We kind of see that body right there. I might want to bend this body and do different things. Let's, let's just kind of get this going. Here's the body. If I want to bend it, rather than bending the vectors, go in and use the puppet warp tool. Right, so the puppet warp tool you could even use for simple shapes, right? See that right there? Let's delete that part. But now I have these two points. Maybe I'll put one in the middle. I can bend it like so to get, you know, an interesting angle. So you could use that for, again, simple shapes. Let's <clears throat> grab our pencil, come up here, try to stay with the spirit of this wing. Why is everything always disappearing when I'm drawing? Right, big wing. What else does it have? A teeny tiny head. Boop, it's so cute. Right, we'll do the tail. Zoop, zoop, zoop. Something like that. Why does it keep disappearing? Does anybody know? I'll check uh, my appearance panel. Okay. Cool. Um, when you're drawing really fast, uh, clever hummingbirds nearly fly up your nose when you're outside. What are you doing? What is happening over there? They are. That's insane. Why, why are they like, why do you have so many humming, hummingbirds around you? That's my question. I would love to have hummingbirds outside. I need to put out some hummingbird feeders. So here this is. We'll do the same thing, right? Jump in. Width profile, increase that, right? But we need to have some more fun with the wings and different parts, right? First off, this isn't, this isn't looking that great. So let's fix it. Zoop.
the shape gets a little funky. Actually, I'm going to just kind of draw it again. Bring it over. Go like so. Um, it doesn't have a lot of motion overall. It kind of looks like a hunting bird, but it just needs to be uh, a little bit more dynamic overall. So we got to stay with the spirit of this image. Does it have a big enough head? Does it need to be a touch smaller? Let's take it down a touch. And let's play with this wing. How is everybody doing today? Good? You guys doing well? I want this to bend a little bit more. Like that. Maybe something like that. Okay. Uh, needs a little bit of a belly blob. Yeah, maybe. I think that's the technical term for it, belly blob. Uh, let's take a look at other hummingbirds. Now, check this out. We can go into um, nature, and let's just see. Hold on. Adobe stock. And we'll search for hummingbird. All right. Man, coffee is good. Yeah, uh, you didn't know you could use Puppet Warp in Illustrator, just Photoshop. Yeah, it is in Illustrator, it's in Photoshop, and you know where it started? After Effects. That's actually where it came from. So uh, definitely need to work on the wing, right? The wing is kind of funky, right? So I'm using my CC libraries. If you click right here, you can change this to Adobe Stock and then just start searching. You even have some, yeah, some nice, these are cool too, right? We will get there. I also like the the thought of having two wings because right now we just see one. I think we need to be able to, to sort of see both, but I could take any one of these, bring them out, drop them in, right? Okay, so here's a reference. Um, here's another reference. We're making sure we have just that perfect little shape. Ooh, that's a beautiful reference too. Dropping that in like that, and let's start playing with it. Now that we have a couple more references, right? Because my wing's all off, right? It's not, it's not all bulbous out here. And when it comes to like creating like a minimalist illustration, like you just have to have everything. Everything that is there needs to be tight, right? Just needs to be look exactly like what it needs to look like. Um, and uh, don't add any extra lines. So I'm changing that like so. There we go, we're getting it, right? Slowly, let's eliminate that all together. Minus, boom. Okay, not bad, not bad. Oh, like, look at this one. The tail kind of tends to disappear a little bit. Are you noticing that? So, you know, if I take the overall appearance of a um, hummingbird, Right? Like, and this is the problem when you're going off of one illustration. It's like I've realized, oh, the, the tail kind of, it should just be much smaller after referencing other images. And it should flow into the back. So that's why I want to kind of come in here. We'll shrink this up some more, okay? 
and we want this to flow more with the back of the hummingbird as well. I think we'll even connect it. Something like that. There we go. How is everybody doing today? What is going on in everybody's life? There we go. Bingo. Simplifying. We're getting there. Work it. Work it, Paul. Work it. There we go. Cool. All right. So what's up, Frank? Uh, Okay, cool. And we're going to do, maybe we'll do some flowers. And then, but the cool thing is, is like once we create this one uh, hummingbird, we're going to be able to duplicate it and, and manipulate it, you know, but we do have to nail this first one. That's why this, this is taking like a little bit of time, right? And I, I think it's like, if you're creating a minimalist illustration, it's kind of like you're, yeah, you're basically creating a, a logo of, a, of an object, right? That's what you're doing. Creating like a logo of an object. See? The wing was too big. I'm just kind of analyzing this, like the size of this wing compared to the rest of the body. The size of the body versus the wing here, right? So you can kind of start to see the proportions. Like, is it like too big? Do I need to shrink it up just a touch, right? So maybe that's more along the lines of uh, what we want in this case. Something like that. But I think it's like, just like with creating logos, just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy. In fact, I think simpler things are way more difficult. You know, if you've ever seen a caricature artist, caricature artists are amazing because they know what to emphasize and what to leave out, right? What, what's unique about this one person that I can exaggerate? It's like, first off, you need to know how to draw people. Second off, um, you know, you need to know what to exaggerate. That's all. Okay, how are we doing? Looking at this, just taking a look in here. It's all this stuff. The maybe the head we need to work on too, right? Just this big bulb, right? Well, how could we meld two shapes together, right? Because that's what we kind of need to do now is we need to meld some stuff. Um, that's probably what I would do here with this with this case. I'd select this, select the body, and uh, yeah, I'd probably join them. So let's go ahead and join them with Pathfinder. Hey, why not? Um, from there, I can grab any one of these points using my direct selection tool and just kind of oh, the, ba -ba, bend that in like that. So that's how I'm just like kind of curving these two points together. But honestly, I need to start just removing some of these points. Let's remove some. That's my start. Maybe we'll bring that back. Let's redo those corners. There we go. Yeah, head is still too big. Where's my reference? Oh yeah, this front part. Oh yeah, boop, boop, boop. Draw that like so. So, so that's a much better shape, right? Initially, just had a circle. So yeah, you're gonna start with basic shapes, and obviously start tweaking it, uh, and that's looking like a lot better. I think I'm close to actually. It has a little bit of a hat on them. It's like little, little, little high up here, right? We'll just smooth that out like so, and. Uh, really you have that nice flow between like the beak and the head so we can tighten that up as well. A dainty little hummingbird head. Cool, we did it. You can even trace over a photo and identify where all the SC... Yeah, you could, you could, yeah, exactly. You're exactly right. 
Like that's kind of why I did the um, the rhino earlier. It's just it was just sort of a uh, that was one exercise and just like tracing a shape. But yeah, you could totally do that. Uh, feel free. I kind of like doing things this way too because like you 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 start to understand. So so the problem with tracing over this one is its tail was too big and it started to not look like a hummingbird. But if you use lots of references, I think you get the general idea. Uh, of what a hummingbird looks like rather than just relying on one one photo that might be off a little bit Even for the body. I'm noticing the body is still a, a little a, a little bit long. Maybe well, It's actually okay, so I'm also comparing the size of the wing to the body stuff like that So I'm just comparing all of these and doing sort of a general shape Anything else what else do I need to adjust in here? Do I need to shorten up the body is what I'm looking at basically? No, I think it's good. All right, let's go with it. We did it. We did this guy. We're not done with it, though, because we're going to add some texture and some fun stuff to it as well. Okay, so we'll start joining some of these parts because, uh, yeah, they just need to be joined. Uh, you could use your Pathfinder, you know, your um, Shape Builder if you want to. But let's add some fun texture because all of these have these cool, like, if I just if I just squinted my eyes at this, like this is a, you know, if we got into color, you just notice that this is very light. So out of everything going on here, I'm noticing like this shape and this shape, right? So that's what I'd want to start to kind of analyze. Um, yeah, so let's do that. Let's kind of take a look at those shapes. We'll open up our libraries panel. I think the wing is closer to the neck. Yeah, good call. I mean, here, Maybe this actually, the neck is thicker. Ooh, it is. You know, the best thing you can do when it comes to drawing is sometimes not draw. And what I mean by that is like step away and, uh, you know, if you just step away, go get a coffee, clear your head. When you come back, that's when you'll notice the weird thing. Because when you approach things with fresh eyes, you'll just notice any sort of uh, oddity that you might have. So uh, taking breaks is important. But, okay, so there we are. Let's just kind of drop in some, yeah, let's just drop in some stuff. Let's just do this. Drawing in a line. Let's just do our jobs. Let's just get it done. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do now because I need to draw a bunch of the same stroke. So I will open up, what's this? Do 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 open up my appearance panel. We'll make sure that is unchecked. New art has basic appearance because I want to just create one little profile like this, maybe take this down like that. And now every time I draw a line, you know, it's going to have that same property, right? So I could do something kind of like that. This one's a little funky. Let's get rid of it. All right. So there you go. Something kind of like that. Oh, I love the tail down here. Let's do some swooshies. Just throw some swooshies in there. Why not? We can have a swooshy right here. There we go. Anywhere else compared to other parts? We need the eye, of course. Just kind of panning around. Look at these cute little guys. They're adorable. They're so stinking adorable. Let's do its crazy eye. It's a little too crazy. But there we go. There's our hummingbird. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we could do a fun blend for the wing. Oh, that's a good idea. You know, there's, uh, there's like, yeah, do we, do we add more to this? I think we should add color. I think that would be fun. Um, but I'm also thinking about what you said. It's like, do we, do we use the blend tool? Like, would we want sort of a graduated, uh, you know, lines that started thick and maybe went thinner or something. 
So if we wanted something uniform, we can go ahead and use the blend tool. I think it's okay right now though, by the way. Maybe one more there. Yeah, it's okay. We'll throw some color in here. Hey, why not? The tail and wings look very elegant. Oh, cool. Michelle, you are so nice. I'm so glad you were here. Thank you so much for joining me. This is great. Uh, all these kind of need to be stretched out. A lot of times I'll throw this stuff on a different layer. So what am I? Uh, yeah. Oh, good. I did. I was. I, future Paul was uh, looking out for present Paul. Um, so let's take this. All these lines. I need to stretch them out in an odd way. So I'm just free transform tool. Could I use the free transform tool to do that? Uh, right up here, free transform, you have perspectives. Uh, just grabbing that and kind of pulling that in a little bit more. And maybe this down. Okay, anyways, we're, we're done. We got this looking good. Uh, let's add some more to it. We can create a mask. We can do some uh, coloring. Let's take this hummingbird right here and we'll duplicate it. Why not? We'll turn off everything else. Take this, copy. I need to create just some backups and stuff. All right. Cool, let's, let's throw some color in here. Okay, so I need, a, I need to throw some color inside of this wing, all right? Because they all, you know, well, at least it's lighter, like, you know, right in here. Might wanna throw some color in there, just in this part of the wing. I wanna show you this real fast. I can select this and let's turn off my details. Actually, maybe we'll keep them on. But we'll select this and I actually need to put some color inside. I could use something like the uh, good old uh, blob brush. The blob brush does, and I'll use my uh, uh, closing bracket, opening bracket to paint, but I'll show you what that looks like, and let's just grab, you know, just, oh darn it, I hate it when I do that. Um, I'll grab a different color, so give me one second. Let's go over here. You know, another color just for kicks. Here's our blob brush. What our blob brush does is make, you know, instead of it painting a stroke, it paints a fill, right? So that's might be what I want. I'm gonna select, so I'm gonna select this wing. I wanna actually paint with the blob brush. I wanna like paint within here. Ugh, I hate that I did that. But I wanna paint within here. So typically, you know, you're just not gonna be that accurate. Right, you're gonna kind of miss and go out. So all that to say, you could select this object, go right down here, and we have these, draw behind, draw inside. Oh, that sounds great. Let's click draw inside, right? So now I can draw inside of this wing and we'll select our brush and our color. Um, you know, I'm not sure pink is the right color, but let's just kind of show you what that does as I paint. You can see it just paints inside. So anyways, I just think that was kind of cool. Maybe you didn't know about that. I think that's uh, that's been a feature. It's been an illustrator since like day one, it seems. But there's our, there's our color. So this makes it kind of fun. In fact, you know, if I have these all as one shape, let's just go ahead and make them one shape. And by the way, if we go back to this, Select this. Notice how uh, it makes a clipping mask. So if you double click on it, it makes a clipping mask is what happens there, right? So that, that's essentially what's happening. If I want to go in and change it, I just jump back in and uh, you know start manipulating these points accordingly. Okay, so that's all. I'll do the same thing over here. Let's select these. Properties, uh, bingo. I have this as one big shape too. Yeah, let's just have let's just do that with everything. We'll take this. Yeah, we'll outline it. Why not? Uh, expand appearance. 
join it with its other friends and uh yeah we'll start painting maybe with some different colors i don't know we could have fun with this in fact any is there black anywhere on these no you know maybe the whole thing's green probably need to think about that now too i probably do Yeah, let's try this. We'll go with that green. That green, there we go. Uh, let's turn on everything else. Uh, iridescent. Ooh, like I like this one. Okay, so I see it now. Right, some white here. This actually should probably be white. Um, this should be purple down here. You get the idea. So we'll do the same thing. We'll click that button. Now we can paint inside. We will select our blob brush. Oop. Wait for it. Checking the time. Oh good, I still have 15 minutes. Yay, so I selected this. Oh sorry, I accidentally selected draw behind. I'm so sorry about that. Did you guys notice I was stumped? I selected the middle one. Rarely do I need a draw behind. No, I think these should be flipped. So this is draw normal, draw behind. I need to do draw inside. So that was my, my fault, I'm sorry. Selected the wrong one. Uh, purple, right? Zip, zip, zip. Do some, throw some purple in there. Why not? There's some purple. Let's get some white or uh, maybe like a taupey color, right? For the chest. Oops. Maybe I didn't select the taupey color, right? You get the idea. Okay, that's all. Zip. What else? What else? We could actually draw some shapes in here. We don't always have to use the blob brush. The blob brush is just, it's just quick. All right, we can put some color under here. Just like that. What else you got going on? You got some other greens in here. Uh, we're getting a little carried away, right? Um, because, uh, you know. This is supposed to be minimalist. This is getting a little less minimal, <laughs> right? But it's just fun to do overall. Let's have it go down here. Let's fix this because it's going to be driving everybody nuts, isn't it? This shape right here. I get it. Let's curve it out. Do something like that. So you get the idea. Cool. Uh, let's throw in some black, some darker colors too. It's kind of fun. Uh, let's see, darker colors. Yeah, let's just try some blue. Let's see what happens. I threw some blue in there. See, because you get this iridescent look, a lot of blue under there is what I'm going for. Sure, why not? And then it gets black. Right there. Cool? Cool, we did it. Okay. Yeah, not bad. It's all right. Let's smooth out some of these lines. How's everybody doing? I'm sorry I'm not looking at chat, but you know what? I'm trying to get this done. Such is life. Um, this is one very motivated bird. Birds are pretty. Birds are pretty motivated. 
What is the most motivated animal out there, do you think? I mean, let's face it, hummingbirds hustle. They might be a very motivated, one of the most motivated animals. They got hustle in them. Maybe honey badger. You don't want to mess with the honey badger. Let's go back out. Oh, yeah, and then the eye. The eye needs to be black. Okay, you guys get the idea. Get her done. Okay, so we did our hummingbird. I was thinking about like, you know, making flowers, adding multiple hummingbirds, right? So that's another thing we can do. We have this one done. Uh, copy. Let's just put it on its own layer so we can see it in all of its glory. Uh, group it together. Right, here's one. Here's another. Flip it. Right. This one's over here like that. You get the idea. I was going to do the other wing. I didn't do the other side. Oops. But we could do that really fast. Taking this one. Uh, let's take... Uh, let me, I need to look at my references. Okay. Okay. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I see ya. I see ya. Duplicating that, rotating it, send it into the back. I do something like that for that other wing. Uh, maybe pushing it back in perspective. So going to this tool right here, free transform tool, selecting this, right? We can kind of push that back like so, right? Kind of pushing that into the distance and, uh, you know, as, as drastically or as simply as we want. Uh, uh, Let's just grab this top part, scrunch that in. You get the idea. And we have two of our hummingbirds. Yay. Uh, beavers have hustle. Oh, beavers. Good call, Steve. You nailed it. They are the most motivated. I don't have a lot of time. I have like uh, maybe nine minutes. Oh, this is, I almost made a mistake. Because the thing is, these are all made with solid colors. There is nothing with an outline. So if I start drawing some sort of flower, then uh, I got to make sure I don't use outlines for those uh, either. So it's like I got to stick with, you know, the style I'm going for. But in this case, we'll just go ahead and use the uh, radial repeat. There we go, we have that, ready to repeat. And uh, you know, we can just kind of have some fun with this. You know, might want to do something like that initially, right? We could make as many or as few of these as I want, but I want to do sort of like two different levels for this. So I'll have this one, I'll send it deep, copy, paste, a second one on top. Maybe that's rotated a little bit uh, like that. Send that to the back, but more importantly, change the color. Jump in here. Let's just shift this color a little bit darker, like so. And, uh, ooh, that one was actually the top one, but something like that. So I was thinking for, like, you know, a quick, a quick flower. You get it. And we can have as many of these as we want. Zoop, 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 zoop. Send it to the back. Underneath that, maybe it's a green background. Maybe, maybe it's blue, but also we need just some like um, quick. Uh, stems. Uh, let's use this. Let's just use a straight line. Let's just do this. Bingo, 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 bingo. You get it, right? Let's actually now that I have those straight lines. Let's do this really fast. Get that. Get there, Paul. Hurry. You got five minutes. 
Flip these two. Uh, make this a sharp point. But da, but da, right? It's my sort of quick leaf. Maybe, uh, maybe like that. Hurry. Flip it. Move it. All that good stuff. Bingo. Bango. Shabam. Shaboom. Shaboom. Get rid of you. I don't know, something kind of like that. Take this. Make it a brush. Pattern brush. Done. All righty. Select all of these. Let's jump in, grab our pattern brush right down here. Bingo. Um, flip the direction, actually, looks like. Reverse path directions. So they're all kind of like going up. Um, but yeah, I guess that's it. Right? We could play with the width tool. Excuse me, not the, the width profile of that stroke. And now we get like variety too, right? But that is all, right? We can have some with different sizes, different colors. You get the idea. Our hummingbirds are getting lost, but man, they're having a heyday, aren't they? Now that I have this done, another thing we could do to start to make these look different is, uh, and again, I guess I've been using this a lot today, puppet warp, right? So now I can take this one, bend this up, get this part maybe down a little bit more, something like that. Right, it's just trying to make like a different shape for this hummingbird. He's just zipping along. He still needs his other wing, but you get it. Um, yeah, so we did we did our fun illustration. I might eliminate that flower. I think there's too many otherwise. Oh, I have this wing. Thank you, wing. Zoop, zoop. Get down there. Get over there. Get it done. Like so. There we go. Sure, that works. Cool. Cool. Flowers are a little much. I don't know what you guys think. Um, you know, just kind of playing around, showing you how to make some sort of minimalist illustrations, uh, starting with, you know, I, we did the rhino. Um, oops. Sorry about your eye, buddy. Get back over there. And you get the idea. We can make different versions as well. I'm down to my, like, last minute. But I also like using the uh, recolor artwork. So we take this one. Let's just shift this one a little bit different. We could shift this over. Um, and maybe try to get something different. You know, just a, maybe it's a whole different species. I don't know. I don't know. Just kind of making it up as I go along. But there's our different hummingbird, and you guys get the idea. And uh, that was uh, Illustrator just kind of creating a simple object hopefully you guys appreciate this um oh yeah bobby orlando let's have a fantastic relaxing weekend that sounds good to me oh I, i'm missing his uh other wing where does other wing go uh oh i might not have duplicated it oops sorry buddy oops I think I just moved it. I robbed him of a wing. But you get the idea. Cool. Cool. All right, thanks, Michelle. Uh, Danas, uh, Terry White's going to be up next, which would be awesome. I'm going to stick around for that. Thank you all for uh, watching. Down to my last uh, 50 seconds. If there's anything else I can tell you is, uh, yeah, like, just have fun. And, like, do your best to always study from life, you know? Study from these sort of real photos. And it's fun that these illustrations are in there, so I could see, like, I like what, who, I like this one's really cool. Like, so we could have pushed that even simpler and made, like, a logo out of it, which I think that's cool. But obviously, just kind of, like, studying from life and seeing what's out there. Really, a hummingbird, we could have deduced to something like this. That would have been kind of fun, right? Because what is a hummingbird? What's the big differentiator? Not much of a tail, huge, long, pointy, 
uh, beak or yeah, beak basically. So thanks so much, everybody. Appreciate you. I'll see you in a little bit for uh, my Creative Pro on Adobe Express. Thank you.